Okay, so now that we have our Laravel installation set up, we can start playing with some effects and different things that we can do to images. Later on, I'm gonna talk about using some of the canvas objects that they have set up so you can actually make images completely from scratch. So here I am on my Laravel installation. I'm just running this from a route, but you may go and set this up with a controller um, or maybe make it into its own class at this point. Depends on what you're, you need it for and what you're going to do, right? So uh, some really cool things that I'm gonna show you now with intervention that make it like, it really is amazing how easy they make it. So I'm gonna go back and turn on this response image. And what that's gonna do is not going to save it. It's gonna echo out the value of that image. It's gonna basically run it as an image, like as if I just ran an image in the browser window. And here was that image resize, which I probably don't need to do any of the resizing anymore. So I just have that. So it's gonna go and make an image and it's gonna return the image back. So if I refresh this, there's that cat picture that I grabbed from the web. So now the very first thing, you got a couple things. You got backup here and uh, uh, we don't need to come back. Let's just skip that one for now. Let's go do the cool stuff here. So we'll go to blur. Blur is cool, right? So how do we apply? So apply straight blur filters, which is a slight blur, or I can control the amount of blur that I get by saying blur and then the amount. And what's nice about this, because we're not saving it, we can instantly just try a bunch of different things. So to run this, we just grab that arrow syntax like that and say blur 15. So here's our image before. I'm gonna click refresh and it's running, there's the blur. And you see, that's pretty fast, actually. You just did the page, processed all the images, blurred the image, and now I have a blurred image. Now, if I want something that's like, you know, really blurred, I could say blur 100, and we'll refresh. And here it goes, and taking a little bit longer, looks like. Um, hmm. That is gonna be quite the blur I take it there it is now that's quite blurred you can see it did take longer as it had to do more processing and I now have this very blurred picture of a cat uh, that if I want to reference I can go and do so that's a blur and if you need it you can see 0 to 100 the default values and this documentation is actually pretty easy to show you what's going on Let's jump over here to, now, before I get there, you can see sometimes it shows show also. So if I wanna sharpen something or pixelate it or do some brightness, let's try sharpen real quick. So I did blur it. Now let's do the same thing with sharpen. I'm gonna sharpen at 20. I think that's a good amount of sharpen. I'm gonna take that same picture, refresh it. And here it is, there's a sharp. You see that sharp was quite a bit at even 20. So maybe we just did something like five and refresh. And yeah, so we do get a little bit, you can see in the face here, some of the hairs are a lot sharper and the whiskers itself. You are getting a little bit of this artifacting on the pixels here in the space here of the image. And you always gotta look out for artifacting when you over sharpen things. So look out for that when you're sharpening. And again, that goes to 100. I don't know why you would need to sharpen that much, but that's sharpen. And then we have brightness here. So here's brightness, and it's just gonna brighten up the picture. So let's go and run that. Now, this is cool with, with, with image intervention and with these facades, you can actually chain these together. So I can say, and I like to break them down onto the next line like this. And you'll see that a lot in the Laravel syntax is that I write my code. So I break them down like this, and so now it goes image make, and it all keeps everything nice here. So it's nice and readable versus this very long line. So it's gonna sharpen it at five, and then it's gonna brighten it up by 35. So now we'll run it, we'll run the refresh here, and there it is, brightened it up and sharpened it. So that's quite a bit of brightness. So you can control that brightness level, and you can also darken it by doing negative values for that. So if I said, you know what, let's go the opposite, let's go darker, you can see there just made the image darker. And you think about, look how easy that is. And imagine you had a uh, hundred images and you wanted to make a little batch script or to basically run and say, apply this effect to every single image in this folder, something like that, or resize all the images in this folder. And you're able to very quickly go and do that. 
So you have contrast. Now that's very useful. So you can say, set the contrast to, uh, let's say 35. So I'm leaving the sharpen. I've changed the brightness to contrast. We'll refresh this. And you can see now it's getting, what I think I would prefer over brightness is getting some of those values there and I'm changing that contrast level based on the cat photo. So that's contrast. You can see again, that's uh, zero contrast with no changes, 100 for max. And if I wanted to reduce that contrast, sort of those gray values, I can do negative numbers. And you can do a lot of that in Photoshop as well. We have colorize here. And I'm just showing you, there's a lot here that you can check out. I'm just showing you the things that I think that are the most popular and the most likely that you're gonna wanna go and set up and use. But you might play with this, a combination of these, chain, chain these things together and make your own kind of filters that you can then go and apply to your uh, images. So here's colorize and it takes uh, RGB values. So if I wanna apply that sort of multiply effect, that kind of look to it, I could take this and apply that colorize effect. So let's go and try one of these out. So we're gonna say sharpen and then colorize uh, based on these values. So let's see what that runs as and there it is, we have this nice blue tone to our image. Pretty cool. I can see definitely of using that with a couple other effects to get some really cool looking style uh, effects and things like that. So here's pixelate, let's keep them going. Here's pixelate, apply pixelation effect. So we'll say chain that one on. So I'll do arrow syntax here to call the method here of pixelate. And it's saying the pixelate values are the size. So the current image given size of pixel. So I'm gonna say, let's go with 12. That sounds good, that's what they went with. We'll click refresh. And oh, looks like we ran into syntax there. Semicolon at the end here. That's all right, we'll refresh. And there's our pixelation, right? So if we want that pixelation effect, pretty easy to go and add that pixelation effect. Now again, what's cool about this image response is I'm not actually changing this image. The original image is still there. It has not been modified at all. I'm making an instance of it every time PHP runs, and then I'm just responding back the image. Now, if I wanted to save it at any time, I could run the save, but at this point, I'm just, I'm just saying, hey, send the image back to the browser. Don't save the image. All right, so we have, of course, grayscale, and that's pretty straightforward. Looks like grayscale just turns, no parameters, you say grayscale the image. So I'm gonna colorize the image, which doesn't really make sense. So let's remove that one, bring it back up here. We just get rid of sharpen too. I think we got that down. We'll do grayscale and we'll run it and we'll refresh. And you'll see here, it takes the original image and just does a nice black and white grayscale image to it. Very nice. We have invert. So if we wanna invert the colors, again, doesn't take any parameters. So I'm gonna say grayscale it, then invert it. Here we go, notice the semicolon there on the line and then I just broke these down and I'm chaining them. So I'll refresh and we should see there's that inverted cat. We just inverted the image. Okay, so that's the base here. Uh, again, we have colorize, brightness, contrast. We have some cropping controls. Some of these are about, uh, and we'll do in the next episode, about changing the, um, about changing the, creating a canvas and creating shapes on there and things like that. We have here flip. So if you wanna flip the image around, and again, this is so easy to go and do now with image intervention, we can say flip V and that'll flip that image. It's gonna, of course, do all those steps and it's gonna flip it vertical. So very, very easy again. Here's rotate. So if you're like, you know what? I wanna rotate it based on a degree. I can very easily grab that rotate. I'm gonna flip it. I'm gonna, then I'm gonna rotate it. It seems like one of those soccer boppers here, or not soccer boppers, uh, what was that thing called? Uh, bop it, right? Where you would uh, turn it and you pull on it and bop it and say different things, you know, back in the day here. So I'm gonna do this at a 45 degree angle. And so now you can see I just rotated the image. Now when I do this, it's basically turning the rest of this image into a canvas object here. So this canvas space here. So that all that white space is actually there. If I was gonna download this picture, I would see that white space. Because an image can't, like a JPEG or a PNG, can't have this shape. 
It's just an illusion of the size of it. So keep that in mind when you do rotate um, and how that is set up. So we talked about the flip there. We have a fit parameter. Uh, let's go to it and check that one out. Of course, we talked about the invert already. There's a limit colors and a couple others in here that we will definitely want to go and check out and see what happens on. So in the next episode, let's go and explore a couple more of them, uh, the effects and things like that, that we can do working with color and some opacity and actually grabbing colors from the image.